This is a short video about my memories of building BR57, a building in Rugby, England, my workplace for many years, and now sadly due for demolition. Building BR57 and the associated BR57A was built by AEI, or Associated Electrical Industry, in the 1960s as a research laboratory. It represented the high point of that company, which not long after went into decline before being sold off to GC, then Alstom, Convertim, and finally ending up as part of General Electric's power conversion. The majority of what was once a vast industrial complex is now largely submerged under suburbia. Little do the present residents know that beneath their immaculately manicured lawns lie the place for the once employed Paul Dirac on his journey to winning the Nobel Prize the place where the hologram was first developed, and for over a hundred years manufactured complex electrical machines which were exported around the world. BR57 is the latest building to be sacrificed for the easy money of property development. Reducing what was once the industrial metropolis that stretched from the rugby railway tracks to Brownsover is now reduced to a small suburb on Technology Drive. I myself started working there in 2003. My previous company had been based in a brand new state-of-the-art office building containing such modern niceties as air conditioning. It was fair to say, therefore, that I was not greatly impressed by my new workspace. The building was very much showing its 1960s heritage, with large metal panels covering large radiator pipes painted in a sort of dirty beige. The lighting relied on ranks of fluorescent lights, which cast a harsh glare onto the long stretches of open-plan offices. The windows were placed high above the sight lines, presumably to remove any distraction from the workers. Apart from a few key areas, there was no air conditioning. On hot days, the only way to reduce the office temperature was to swing the windows open in the hope of catching a breeze. This would drift above the workers' heads until being blocked by the closed offices on the other wall. On really hot days, the office reverberated by the sounds of fans, helplessly shifting the warm air around. The heating system was equally primitive. When turned on, it seemed to take months to warm up, then, as the days got longer, overstepped the required temperature. However, the thing that amused me the most was the tea ladies. Twice a day, they would trundle up and down the corridors, offering hot beverages to the desk. So engraved was his schedule that there was almost a Pavlovian stoppage of work at the exact same time of day as the employers waited their refills. In short, Rather than working for a modern organisation, I felt I had somehow stumbled into a 1960s Elon comedy. If normal wisdom had fallen through the door shouting for Mr Grimsdale, I would not have battered an eyelid. But as years went by, I started to form a new appreciation for the building. Now, it's easy to fall into the trap of anthropomorphism, but it had to be said that the building felt like it had a soul. This could have been the accumulation of history and hopes of those who had worked in the building over the last 40 years seeping to the bricks and mortar. It could also have been because, well, unlike modern buildings that are generally nothing more than identical skins overlaid on a skeleton designed for cost and expediency, BR57 felt it has been designed as a temple to its function and has solidity of purpose. For example, the stairs looked like they'd been hewn from granite. Part of the outside was clad in slate. Even the windows and radiators were surrounded by hardwood that had survived the 60 years of work since they had been installed. While modern buildings are built, BR57 felt like it had grown organically. And while the modern office makes you feel like you are a contaminant in their sterile space, in BR57 you felt like an organic part of the building. That is not to say the building did not have its faults. As mentioned, it was not warm enough in winter and far too hot in summer. The long sweeps of offices meant conversations too easy travelled and often part of the building failed. Also, there were never enough meeting rooms and few areas for socialising. This was exasperated by the tea ladies, ensuring that people stuck to their desks, meaning there was little socialising, or as I called it, have water cooler meetings. It was only after the later addition of the restaurant that there was any opportunity to meet people outside your area. Even after 20 years, there were still some areas where I have only a vague idea of their function. Also, the building space was never really fully utilised. Between
between BR57 and 57A, there were two large open courtyards, forever locked off, and sometimes a source of foul smells from the drains. There were a number of plans over the years to close them off, and they would have made a great atriums. But as with many office design ideas, these plans never came to fruition. Outside, there were large grassy areas, but apart from the occasional pop-up barbecues, there remained just that, large grass spaces, unused and largely ignored. C. Northcote Parkson once wrote that if you were looking for company excellence, you should shun the gilded pristine offices, but instead head for the dishevelled organisations, since only those companies with little to do can afford the time to perfect their working environment, while those overwhelmed with work require expediency to complete their tasks. BR57 was proof of this. Its untidiness was due to the fact there was never enough time to organise it. It was only when the building was finally being closed that 60 years of collective memories could be sorted and largely discarded in the nearby skip. It also meant the engineers could ignore the clean desk diktaks and set up their kit in the most efficient manner for work, since what was a few more hacking cables in the grand scheme of things? BR57 in many ways represents the end of the era of offices. In the post-Covid world, where the Pandora box of remote working has been fully unleashed, the need for such dedicated buildings are becoming fewer as younger workers are rebelling at being put into such cages from 9 to 5. It is possible that one day such offices will only be seen in museums in the same way that we gawk at Victorian workhouses now. Therefore I could be part of the last generation to have experienced working like this, and while I may not miss the bricks and mortar itself, I will miss the memories, the colleagues and the times that the building represented. BR57, rest in peace.